Hello, everybody. Welcome to the webinar on Better Grades in Less Time, the online study skills course. I'm Paul. I'm here in DC. Uh, if you want to let me know where you're joining in from, that'd be cool. Uh, some of you are members of HECA. Some of you are members of IECA. Uh, go ahead and let us know in the chat box which part of the country you're coming to us from. I saw a couple of familiar names, so thank you to those of you who are already friends. And it's exciting to have people from states that I've never been to. Uh, if you don't hear anything, I do believe that is just you. Uh, poke around and maybe try the your volume on your computer, you got it, yay. Uh, if you have any questions during the webinar, go ahead and type them in there. We will have plenty of time at the end to address all questions, but if you wanna type it in so you don't forget, you can go ahead and do that. We can all see the chat box. Uh, the We'll probably spend 20 or 25 minutes talking about how to get better grades in less time and there'll be plenty of time for your toughest questions so don't be shy so i am the founder and director of smith revis study skills and academic coaching as i mentioned i'm here in dc our other office is in los angeles where my sister laura does the same stuff that i do which is basically teach anybody who could use better grades in less time how to get them so that they can enjoy the many benefits of earning better grades in less time. So my first suggestion would be that you minimize distractions uh, here, this is actually a study skills tip. If you can see your phone while you are working, it is distracting you, even if it's turned off and face down. If you can see your phone, it's distracting. Here you see the very distractible Barry the study dog, who, if he even smells a squirrel within a distance, he starts flipping out. So that's like his version of phones. Remember that if you stay till the end of the webinar today, I will enthusiastically send you a free PDF of this book will not be on the test, which will literally save you tens of thousands of dollars on your future educational expenses. I am dead serious. The stuff in this book will save you tens of thousands of dollars on school, grad school, college, anything. So stay till the end and I will email that to you. Some of you may know Daniel Pink as the author of the books When, The Science of Perfect Timing and Drive concerning the science of motivation. He's also the creator of one of the most watched TED Talks in the history of the world. And here you have his opinion on this book will not be on the test. So let's start by discussing the benefits of the online course. So you're going to hear a lot about not only about the online course, but also study skills in general. And you're going to get some good ideas about how to help yourself or your students with study skills. So one benefit is that you get better grades. Now that could mean better grades is like kind of, that means different things to different people, right? Some students are trying to go from C plus to B, other students are trying to go from B to A minus. Uh, here you have an example of a student I worked with last spring who was trying to go from A's and A minuses to all A's basically. Maybe he had a B plus or two in there, but for his purposes, he really needed all A's and he really needed them efficiently. So 
some students need A's, some students need B's, other students need C's. It's all relative. But one huge benefit of the online course is that you will get better grades. One of my favorite benefits of the course is that not only will you get better grades, but you'll get better grades in less time. That's why it's called that. You will have more free time to do your favorite things, such as hiking the mountains above Santa Barbara, California, where I'm from. Some students need more time to make things in their basement. Some students need more time to blow things up in their basement. Some students need more time to read for fun or make movies or practice their instruments or learn another instrument. There's just kind of infinite things that students could want more time for. I'm always interested in the new things that students come up with that I've never heard of, such as LARPing. One of, one of my favorite things that people want more time for is LARPing, live action role play. If you don't know what it is, look it up. It's fun, LARPing. So here's an example of somebody who really could not care less about grades. This young man did less schoolwork than I have ever seen somebody do in college and not get kicked out, and it worked for him. His only concern was to be eligible, academically eligible to play college baseball long enough to become a professional baseball player, which he totally accomplished. He is still playing. And if by chance you saw the AAA National Championship game on TV a couple of weeks ago, he's the one that hit the home run in the later innings. His name's Peter Maris III. He's with the Giants organization. He's probably the best example I could think of of somebody who really only wants more free time so they can go practice something and they do not care about grades. That is fine. We're not here to convince people to go for certain grades. Sometimes you just want more time to do cool stuff. And then we've got students who they really, they're happy with their results. Um, they, they don't feel like they're doing an oppressive amount of homework, but nevertheless, they're stressed out. So those folks, really what the relief that we can bring them is pure and simply less stress. This young woman had is actually the subject of one of the subjects of the chapter in the book called Young Women with Low Confidence. If you can believe it from the picture, this was a young woman with low confidence, even though she had a thriving YouTube channel. Once she got in the new academic environment, she really just started stressing herself out and doubting the skills that had gotten her there. And she really needed to improve her approach to schoolwork, not because she had an impossible amount of schoolwork and not because it was, it was taking her forever and not because she was, her grades were bad but she was just stressed. So here you see the, the main benefits of better grades in less time. Let me know which resonate with you the most. Go ahead and type them in the chat box. What, which of these things do you think would be most immediately useful for the people that you work with or the students you have around you? Or picture yourself as a student, if you were to go back to school, which of these things would you be most excited about? Yeah, that's great. I love that. All of them, right? Uh, so th something resonates with everybody. Uh, you know, when I was a student, I think I would, I really could have done with more free time myself. Um, but hey, whether you need better grades, whether you want more free time, whether you just know a lot of stressed out students who could deserve to chill more, whatever your motivation or theirs, I'm here to help. So how do I know this is going to work for your students? Well, the simple answer is that it works for every student who wants it. 
We can't tie people to the chair and make them do the course, but if they want better grades or more free time or less stress, they will get all those things. They only have to want one, but everybody experiences all those benefits from the online course. Here you have the anchor of the PBS NewsHour, Judy Woodruff. Does anyone watch the PBS NewsHour? I did not actually know who Judy Woodruff was until I met her in person the first time, um, but she has just been a huge supporter of mine and super generous with her help. So thank you, Judy. All right, so study skills really are the key to everything. It's the same stuff you need to do a great job at work. It's the same stuff you need to plan ahead to have an awesome life. Uh, as Daniel Pink showed us, is actually the only way to get your money's worth in college or grad school these days, certainly grad school. And it really does work for everybody because it's based on science, right? The stuff that we teach in this course, you know, we didn't make this stuff up. We just like it because it always works and it always works because it's based on all the recent science of learning, which has been booming in the last 10 or 15 years. So I actually did experience this stuff firsthand years before I knew what it was called, right? So study skills really did change my experience of school. I was under the illusion that I was smart, really that was not the case. And I discovered that once I got to college and met some people who were really, truly super duper smart. Uh, really, my circumstances were that I just had really good study skills. Thankfully, that my mother had beaten into me from the time I was small without my even really realizing it. So what did I get from that? I got a full scholarship to college, meaning room and board and books and a little extra for four years back when those things were still possible. Once I got to college, I had majors in math and sociology and Spanish and a minor in athletic coaching for which I did everything but the actual coaching piece. I also had time to study abroad for six months in Mexico City, and I worked 10 to 50 hours per week in the athletic department doing PR for the college's sports teams, traveling with the sports teams every other weekend. For real, up to 50 hours per week, I was working in college with my three majors and a minor, taking many, many classes at a time, even in Mexico. And I would say that the same skills that helped me have an awesome time in college helped me budget and plan ahead and think big and think long term in a way that allowed me to travel to as wherever I wanted to go. I spent three of the seven years in my 20s abroad doing cool stuff. And that was made possible by the fact that I could work efficiently and save efficiently and then spend efficiently to have an awesome a time as possible on a very modest budget. So better grades in less time, the course will change your students' lives. My favorite thing here is perhaps that students will actually learn more. You know, grades aren't really the point. Grades are arbitrary and inconsistent and almost never matter to how your life turns out. But learning, learning is really what we're going here. So the better grades in less time, that's just a convenient name that people respond to. But really, we accomplish that by teaching people how to actually learn more in their classes. And if you master the material, you will always get good grades. And we're really into helping people develop into the awesome people that they might become 10 years from now at a faster pace than they would have if they didn't figure out how to do school efficiently. So we encourage students to try new stuff once they have extra time and to accept all first invitations to go do new things that they otherwise wouldn't have thought they had time to do because it didn't align with their previous goals. And then finally, you know, most importantly for parents, career-wise, students are going to be in a much better position to make the most of their post-college life and not have to move back into the basement. Because once they figure out that they can make their long-term goals happen for themselves school-wise, 
it translates really well, really well to the cruel world in which they have to pay rent. So let's talk about how this actually works. How do you improve your motivation and time management? These next few slides are going to show you exactly what I teach my students one on one at their home or on Skype and exactly the same stuff that we have in the online course. This is really what we teach. So here you go. Here's some stuff you can take with you immediately to go help your students. So you have to figure out everything that you want to get done, right? Not just the stuff you have to get done. You have to kind of like think big and be, be ambitious in how you're going to treat yourself and think up a bunch of stuff that you want to do. So once you have all these things, you got to make sure that you really want to do them. Make sure you're not doing them because your mom wants you to do them. Uh, make sure you're not doing them because that person with the cool shoes wants you to do it, right? So figure out what you want to do, know why you want to do it, and then you have to do everything at the best time for that thing. So there is a good time of day to do homework. There is a good time of day to do hard homework. There's a good time of week to do your preparation for tests. And then there's a bunch of times a day where it doesn't make sense to try to get anything done. Once we figure out what you want to do and when you should be doing it, then we start working on how to deal with the stuff that they dump on you in school. So that basically amounts to everything that happens in class and everything that happens reading wise or homework wise outside of class. So a student's job is not really to learn everything in the class. A student's job is really master everything in the class inside and out and decide how they feel about it so that they know where to file it in their huge brain for future use on things more important than school. So the way to do that is to get interested in this stuff. There is no boring subject. There are only subjects that you don't know enough about to realize why they're cool. Uh, soccer is a good example of this. Soccer is becoming more popular in the United States, admittedly, but you know, 10 years ago, nobody cared about soccer. Does that mean that Americans are right and the other 6 billion people in the world are wrong? No, it means that Americans haven't Googled why soccer is cool, because if they did, they'd get 17 million results in half a second showing you what's cool about soccer. So you got to get yourself excited about the work you have to do because you have to do it anyway, and it will stick more easily if you can connect it to the stuff that you already have in your huge brain and to the things that you think you care about more than this topic. Now, most importantly, once you do that, once you go in learning actively and excited about what you're going to do, then you have to review what the heck you have learned to make sure it then doesn't leak out of your brain at the end of the week or at the end of the hour of class. Because as I'm sure many of you are familiar with, there's that famous curve of forgetting stuff where an hour after something's happened, you've forgotten half of it. And, you know, a week after something's happened, like, sheesh, who knows, right? So what's today? Thursday. So what did you have for lunch on Monday? I mean, I don't know. Monday's like a million years ago, right? So that's why you have to review every week if you want to have a chance of remembering stuff quickly on a test. So... Not only do you have to remember this stuff, that's actually perhaps that comes second to predicting what the heck you're going to have to remember because nobody's got time to do everything. So figure out what stuff you actually have to do, figure out what your teachers are going to want from you, then organize that stuff in your own way, don't settle for the study guide the teacher hands you, which is usually not a study guide at all. Usually it's just a list of what's going to be on the test, which if you take the online course, you'll see that that is actually one third of what should go in a study guide. A real study guide has everything that's going to be on the test, everything you need to know about it, and then plain English step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it or why it's important for life on earth. Once you create that golden study guide, then you're going to use it to quiz yourself. Now, some students don't really know what this means. You'll hear this fancy word retrieval practice. That basically means quiz yourself. Quizzing yourself is when you cover up part of what's on your study guide and 
try to remember what's underneath that part that's covered up. It's not just rereading a beautiful study guide. Rereading is not nearly as effective as quizzing yourself. Now, the point of quizzing yourself is to discover whether you actually know something, because if you don't know something, you want to figure that out Saturday morning and not the Monday morning of the test. So, which of these things would have changed your life instantly? Motivation and time management, reading and note-taking, tests and papers, which of these things is really, do you see as the missing link to your academic experience? The leading reason that people come to us are probably low grades on tests. Was that your experience? Um, let me know in the chat box which things you really wish you had done better. So you're about evenly split between doing things at strategically good times and then making good use of all the work you did at strategically good times to turn those things into high grades. Um, you all, I guess you're, you're a happy bunch of readers and good note takers. That's really good. That's, you know, reading and note taking is to me one of the great examples of how this stuff translates directly to the working world because it's basically how you get the most out of meetings, how you get the most out of a webinar, uh, how you find the important stuff in the stack of things you have to sift through, and how to not misread important emails. All right, so the Better Grades in Less Time online course will work for your students. It works for everybody. It worked for these guys. If you're a baseball fan, hopefully you know who Shane Bieber is by now. Uh, if you're, you'd have to be a pretty serious basketball fan to know who Alan Williams is, unless you play NBA 2K. So if you don't do that, ask your students. Alan Williams was a 78 in his first year in 2K, which the kids will tell you is plenty usable. So these are two fine examples of people who, for various reasons, needed better grades in less time. Hopefully you'll see them somewhere out there in the world. So do you think your students are ready for better grades in less time? Uh, there's, you know, you have a choice. It's a pretty simple choice, right? You can keep doing it the hard way, or you can just s surrender yourself to doing things differently and then go kick butt in life and have an awesome time at everything. It's pretty simple. Uh, if you follow the stuff, you will do way better. So what the heck is in this course? It's divided up into eight units. Um, the, our individual in-person stuff is usually six hours, one hour per week for six weeks. So there's six things that we work on. Motivation, time management, reading, note-taking, tests, and papers. The online course is set up with eight units. So it includes kind of an orientation unit at the beginning and then the culminating capstone unit where students design their own personalized study skills system. So the workbook makes it impossible to mess up. Uh, the workbook has dead easy instructions that are limited to one line on the page, no complicated instructions, single line of instructions, plenty of white space, plenty of room for doodling. The 40 video lessons are there to make doing the workbook fun. There is also lots of built-in accountability. So not only is there a bunch of reflection and prediction set up in the workbook exercises, but there's also a study skills friend agreement in there. So that me meaning that anybody who takes the course is encouraged to teach what they learn in each unit to their most motivated friend and have their most motivated friend hold them accountable by asking a couple follow-up questions. So basically, anyone who buys the course can then go help their most motivated friend free. Anyone who purchases the course gets it forever, including all future improvements. And we offer a seven-day money-back guarantee to anyone who shows their work and decides they don't want to do the course. 
So what does this stuff usually cost? I mentioned the in-person work that we do at people's houses uh, in LA or in the DC area. That costs $17.97 for the, the six one-hour sessions. We also work with people around the country on Skype, FaceTime. That's down to $13.50. And then the eight-hour course is actually more robust than what we can do with individually with, in six hours at people's houses because it's got another 20 exercises built into it to account for the fact that we're not there kicking the kid in the pants. Um, so it's got things like long-term four-year planning. It's got more reflection on past successes and challenges and more explicit planning of when to do certain things down to like when to print stuff out, when to review each subject, that kind of thing in a more detailed and prescriptive way than we usually do with people in person in the six hours. The video lessons for, for frame of reference, the video lessons total, there's 40 videos. That's a total of two hours and 20 minutes of video content. So it's, and then the other five and two thirds hours are the students following the instructions in the video, working through the 36 page workbook. So I, we always suggest that people do this, you know, 30 or 60 minutes at a time on a semi-regular schedule until they've made it through the eight hours. Some people might be tempted to do it all in a week. If they're in a hurry, they're going off to college tomorrow. Other people want to do it kind of more like we work with people in person where it's one hour a week for six weeks. If it's not an emergency and they want more academic context to arise while they're going through the course, that's a good way to do it. There's really no wrong way to do it because of all the fail safes that are built in. So the course costs $497, but if you or anyone that you mentioned the course to purchases it by a couple of weeks from now, um, Friday, October 11, they will get one free hour of one-on-one -on -one academic coaching with me on Skype, just like my regular students get when we work individually. So that's a $225 hour of academic coaching to use at any point during or after the course, whenever they find it most useful, they get that free if they purchase in the next couple of weeks. And we also have a generous referral program that I'm super excited about. This is something I dreamed up. I'm trying to get everybody in the country to do this affordable study skills course and solve their own problems and go make the world a better place. So for that purpose, I'm trying really hard to encourage people to share the course with their friends. And for every one of your friends who signs up, the friend gets $100 off. So if, if one of your students signs up and they tell their friend, the friend is only going to pay $397 instead of $497. And I'm going to give your student $100. Bucks. So their price of the course has then gone down to $397. So, and there's no limit to the number of friends that a student can refer. I would love to be giving people a hundred bucks from now until the world is fixed. So if you're ready to get better grades in less time now for your favorite student or your child, you can go to smithrevisonlinecourses.com and click the button at the top and you can get signed up right away. Anybody who signs up in the next two weeks will get the extra hour of academic coaching. And I will keep track of that by the fact that you sign up in the next two weeks. So I welcome your questions, any and all questions, please don't be shy. Uh, go ahead and type anything you're wondering in the chat box and I will address them until everything is super clear. So go ahead and holler. So what age is this most appropriate for? That's a great question. It, our study skills help works with middle school, high school, college, and grad school students. So 
any of those ages. The, the, the limiting factor is not so much age, but motivation. So the student has to want to do things differently. Um, there's lots of high school and college scenarios built into the course. So high school and college students are going to feel super comfortable. Um, the first student to use the course was a rising ninth grader. And I've got people using it really uh, like rising college freshmen using it. Um, you know, high school, I got a 10th grader right now using it. So really, you know, anybody who wants better grades in less time, but it's kind of like most immediately and obviously useful for high school and college students. Although truth be told, a grad student would get perhaps even more out of it because they have more experience to reflect on. Last year, I worked with a fourth grader. That was a bit of an exception, but you know, the stuff works. Study sales is a sooner rather than later kind of thing. So as soon as you're ready to do things differently, it's a good time to work on your study skills. What else can I help you with? What things are you wondering um, more? Let's see. So the online course is brand new. This is the launch of the online course. So I, this was a massive project, massive project that it was a, it was last year's summer project that I finished this summer. So it took a year and it has been, uh, it's been going since mm, the middle of June. So a few months now, how many? Yeah. A few months now. Um, I've been teaching study skills for this is year nine of teaching study skills and a large portion of my students have some diagnosed learning differences or some undiagnosed learning differences. And so, yes, it totally works for students with learning differences. Uh, this is actually how I got into teaching study skills because my, I had the job of teaching study skills at UC Santa Barbara to everybody who wanted to do things better. And in, in the big public universities in California, the people in the disabled students office are generally just sending emails and making referrals. So anybody who went there and wanted to actually get better results, they sent those people to me. And that was how I discovered that everybody needs study skills, especially students with learning differences. Now, you're, you mentioned um, being concerned that people will follow through on their own. Um, yeah, that's a good concern. So not everybody will follow through on their own. So if you, like, if you have a middle schooler who's got a good, a good kind of collegial relationship with one of their parents, uh, this is a good context for them to work through the course together to help the students stay accountable. Um, the, the, last, the last purchaser of the course is a 10th grader who tries to get his homework done in school so that he can go play more soccer out of school. He doesn't want to have to do homework when he gets home. So that's somebody with a really good motor who is motivated to get great results. He also wants to go to one of the service academies. So he understands the importance of not only having really good academic results, but having time to go be a really good person as well. Um, some students, so, you know, basically some students think they need me sitting there at the kitchen table with them and they actually don't. Uh, people are always surprised by how working on Skype is often no different at all from working in person. Um, but, you know, some students, if you've never done something like this before, maybe you just rather, you, maybe you'd rather see me on Skype. But the, the, with the video lessons, one video from each unit is me talking into the camera, just like on Skype. And the other videos are coaching people through using the workbook through screenshots with the cursor replaced with a tiny picture of my face. So there you see my face bouncing around your page telling you to do stuff. And it's almost as good as me sitting there. Um, does it work for students studying for MCAT exams? Totally, but 
those are really specific. So for example, I, this summer I taught a student how to study for the dental admissions test. And with that person, the writing papers portion of the course was not super relevant. And because she was an adult whom I talked with for an hour before signing her up, rather than talking with the parents before signing up the student, uh, the motivation unit, we had already kind of covered that. So that was somebody who really only needed four hours worth of help. But certainly the approach to how to be work more efficiently, anything that is not immediately applicable in the really specific admissions test context will be supremely applicable once grad school actually starts. And anybody who's preparing for the MCAT while in college definitely needs better study skills immediately in college, right? Everyone needs better study skills. Even the most high performing students in the country, they need better study skills. Everybody is working inefficiently unless they have had somebody beat it into them. What else are you wondering? So if there are no final questions, um, if you have any final questions, go ahead. Don't be shy. Type them in now. Uh, if you don't, um, remember that I will send you a free PDF of this book will not be on the test. I will email that to you as soon as possible. Um, or, you, you know, I'll do that anyway. But you also have the option of buying the book on Amazon. The book is cheap on Amazon right now. The price goes up and down right now. It's, I think, 21 something. Um, so if you buy the book on Amazon and leave a review, I will give you an extra $50 off the online course. So that would mean you'd pay $447 and get the extra hour of academic coaching in there as well. You know, for any of you who have students in your families immediately who need this help. So I will send you the free PDF of the book. And if you are ready to get the online course, go ahead to smithrevisonlinecourses.com. There's more background there too. There's also a button at the top where you can buy it without reading more web pages. Um, oh, here's a yes. Is there a great question? Is there support for questions that arise while taking the course? Yes, on a, and the support actually costs less than what it usually costs. So the course is so robust that there is very little, I anticipate little to no need on students' part for asking follow-up questions because of how much review is built in, and that is by design. But I do offer phone call, uh, phone call support, like Skype support to students who want it at an hourly rate that is less than the usual $225. And that is arranged on the app called Praxy, which if you don't know what Praxy is, I would encourage you to look into it. It's a fantastic way to share your expertise without having to invoice people for small, you know, 15, 30 minute 45 minute phone calls, which can be a real hassle. So yes, there is extra support available and people pay a little bit less for that than they would if they wanted an extra hour of help from me in another situation. Any last questions? Um, I will, you don't need to do that, actually. Um, Aaron, thank you. I have your email somewhere by virtue of your signing up. So I will get it out to you as soon as possible. 
So thank you to everybody for your great questions and for your eager participation. Um, if you have any afterthoughts, feel free to get in touch. You can email me directly here. Um, don't be shy if you have anything down the line that you're wondering about. And I hope you enjoy the book. Many independent college counselors have found that they want their, all their students to read the book because it will get them better grades in less time, which will then get them better college admissions results, which will then help them get their money's worth in college and then generally make you a happy college counselor. So thank you, everybody. This has been super fun. Uh, I will, you will also get access to the recording of the webinar if you'd like to watch it again or share it. I know I tend to rewatch webinars myself. So thank you everybody and have a lovely Thursday.